Hi, in this video, I want to show how to connect to databases with Open Liberty in instances that run in cloud native settings, such as Docker containers or Kubernetes clusters. And if you connect to databases from enterprise applications, you of course have to well, configure which um, database technology to use in your runtime, and your runtime has to know the drivers, has to know how to connect to it. And similarly, you have to provide some credentials and the information how to connect to that database instance. And I want to show you some best practices, how to do that in enterprise projects with minimal effort. And I created this example uh, project, how to do that with um, Java Enterprise and Open Liberty. So that is available on GitHub. And what I did, I included this with um, a runtime that runs an Open Liberty instance here. So as a best practice, first of all, if you use Java Enterprise and JPA, ideally you can split the configuration um, for how to connect to the data source and extract it from the persistence XML if you're only using one single data source, because then you can use the default data source that's provided. So for that reason, this persistence XML is, well, basically empty. It's minimalistic and does not include how to connect to the data source. That's a good thing. So this is loosely coupled and that's only provided in the server configuration. So that is the server XML. So this is how we configure Open Liberty. And you can already see a bunch of things that we configure here, including a data source block. And that configures how we connect to our config example database here. And you can already see that we actually specify a driver, so the Postgres driver here, and also, of course, the properties how to connect to it, among a few other things. So these, this is already interesting because while well, that references to a driver that usually would not be there in a the stock uh, Open Liberty, depending on which database technology we want to use, I use Postgres. And for the same reason, well, if you look closely here, Username and password is not provided in plain text, which is a good idea in this case. Why? Well, it, uh, this is called infrastructure as code. We actually want to um, have all this configuration here in our project under version control. That's the best practice because then we have the full history and everything and all of the developers have easy access how to um, configure a runtime. But of course, we do not want to, well, check in this, these credentials, these secret values into our version control, because then production database access would be available there and so on and so forth. That's a very bad idea. Don't do that. But well, in order to solve this, we have to provide um, all this configuration from the outside. And now two things are interesting. First of all, how we define this driver and how to connect to our well, Postgres technology is in this server XML, in this file, we could specify many more things um, that regard to server configuration. But if we have, let's say, a micro profile lens, uh, micro, sorry, a microservice landscape with multiple uh, microservice deployments and multiple applications, then, well, we do not want to repeat ourselves all over again and provide that, these uh, things in each and every, uh, each and every project. So for that reason, we can actually leverage layered configuration and container-based images. So what happens is if we look at the Docker file in this project, and this is now the desired state, that we only add this very server XML that we just saw, plus, of course, our application. And the rest should already be provided from our base image that we're using. And I call this Open Liberty Postgres. So you can already imagine that this well ships with a Postgres installation. And in this example, I provided this under another folder, Liberty Postgres, that has this well Docker file for our base image that comes from more or less stock Open Liberty installation that is provided for my uh, personal Docker hub. And just adds, well, first of all, the Postgres driver, and then another configuration that well configures the driver which is here, Postgres driver XML. So I just called that, uh, that file in that way. And here we specify how the driver and this library is uh, configured, how we basically will connect to a Postgres database in general. And 
Well, as you can see, this is also some kind of server XML. Actually, it is the same server um, XML syntax, but that is included in a drop in a config drop in defaults directory. So these are more directories that we can use in OpenLiberty to provide well this default configuration. And how that works is described in the documentation of how to configure an OpenLiberty or a WebSphere Liberty. And we can see here that we have multiple um, locations available where we can actually put our configuration files in. And if we use this defaults directory under config drop-ins, we can actually specify more well, defaults that can be uh, overridden in our, well, let's say application specific or server specific configuration file, but that already provide, well, more configuration um, somewhat as a baseline uh, in our base image. So this is now very helpful here because we do precisely this and then can make sure that our server XML already knows about this driver and can reference that driver that was done in this XML file. So that is how to do the layered configuration by using these defaults um, directory. And in case you're wondering how that base image looks uh, like, you can actually have a look at um, that as well. That's also available on GitHub. This is my um, own um, Docker image wall repository. And then, for example, you see that this builds um, a Docker um, image of a base OpenLiberty installation that also comes with a server XML that resides under defaults as well. So this provides very default um, configuration, suggests the HTTP endpoint and also a feature list. And now if you remember that very file, that feature list is actually overridden. So we can provide some defaults that we can later on override in this layered approach. So that's very helpful to keep our server configuration minimalistic. So this is now how to well, tackle the, um, the way of installing features such as database drivers in a minimalistic way without repeating ourselves and with still enabling us to have thin deployment artifacts. So that means in our application, we don't have to ship the uh, pr uh, Postgres driver and actually we don't want to do, do so because we just want to ship our business logic, right? So we can still have small minimalistic uh, deployment artifacts and everything else is provided in the Docker base image. Now, how to do that other thing, how to externalize some configuration into variables that are loaded from the outside. So the motivation behind that, why we want to do that, is that we want to keep the moving parts small. So since that um, configuration, these credentials of our application should not be part in version control, part of the version control repository and actually should also not be part of the build Docker image because these are, well, somewhat secret values. But as a best practice, we include them from the outside. We actually only include them once we start up our container technology, for example. And in order to do so, we use this vari a variable approach. And what is also possible in OpenLiberty is to provide some properties that come from that bootstrap properties file. So we can provide some properties that are then available in our configuration that we can read in our configuration here. And this is precisely what we're doing. So if we place that bootstrap property file into the, uh, into the server config location, then this very example will be possible. The property files will be read under these names and then we can access them. So, of course, we do not want to add this into this project. This would defeat the purpose, right? We do specifically not want to store them on the version control, but only at runtime. So I can show you the run um, script, how I run my Docker container here. So in the case of Docker, I run my config example. So that should be the name of, of my project here, of the Docker image. And now only at runtime, once I start up the container, I want to provide that file. So the bootstrap property file resides on the, uh, this location. At runtime, that will be read from the outside, from my host system in this case. Actually, this is how the bootstrap property file looks like. Very simple, just username password configuration to keep these moving parts minimalistic. Everything else that we somewhat inject from the outside but once we run that example, then this will be provided 
then this file will reside in the actual running container in the running Docker instance. And then once the Open Liberty server starts up, that file will be there. That file will be read at bootstrap uh, variables. And then they will, uh, they will be used to substitute these parameters. Then at runtime, we basically put everything together. The server just can start up. And then we can access everything here. So what I'm running there is also a Postgres database just for the, ba um, for the sake of the example so that we can connect to it here locally. And then locally, what I can do to show you that this uh, works, I can access this config example project under resources for a Jax REST resource. We have a test resource. We can have a look at the, um, at the GitHub project, how that works. And then this is supposed to connect to the database and provide, well, a list of a specific database table, which per default is, of course, empty. Um, but just to uh, for us to know that this example actually works, you can say content type text planes uh, just to post some text to that uh, very resource. Hello, two for no content. And then we see that this actually works with new messages. So we posted something, we created something into a database just for the sake of the example that the database access works. So we see this works if we both externalize the driver configuration into, um, well, another configuration layer and into another base image. And also um, in order to provide the database credentials from the outside. So this is how to do that in plain Docker containers. Now, if we are in a Kubernetes environment, if we run in a Kubernetes cluster, and then imagine if we would like to well, provide this file with the credentials, that's not that easy because, well, in a cluster, we have multiple nodes and we cannot directly access the file system there. But what we do instead, we use Kubernetes secret um, resources and these secrets that um, provide these credentials, they provide, well, secret values as a store that is stored in the cluster. So what we do here, and again, I included a very uh, basic example of a Kubernetes deployment. So what we do, we run a application here. And that is the interesting story. We mount this very volume that I just used um, before from, well, from a so called volume that will be created from a Kubernetes secret. So that means at runtime, there has to be a secret called database credentials that includes, well, the contents of this file bootstrap properties that I want to well, add there um, into the running container, into the running pod. And of course, I refer to a secret that's actually not provided within that YAML file. So same story, we do not want to include that secret as infrastructure as code, as a YAML definition. Again, that would defeat the purpose. But in this case, we want to create the secret, well, for example, from a command line. So that is possible as well. So in order to run that, I, of course, need a Kubernetes um, cluster. So what I do here, I use a cloud um, service to have a managed Kubernetes. I use the uh, IBM cloud to quickly create a cluster here, which I then can use. So if I connect my kube control command line to please give me the services, I see, well, this cluster is empty right now. And now I could add these resources, these YAML files. But of course, this would not work yet because, well, it uses a secret that's not there yet. So actually, I have to create a secret, generic secret that is called uh, database credentials that I can just create from this very file. And then I have that secret available. And if I then add the deployment, again, just for the sake of the example, I use a database that also runs inside of the cluster here. And of course, my application that then connects to this very database using, well, the uh, configuration approach just described and using the Kubernetes secret. And once that is the case, once that is up and running, I have two pods available. And one pod contains my application that runs here. And then I can hopefully access this from the outside. So as a very basic example, I use a so-called load balancer service. So not a more sophisticated ingress or Istio gateway, uh, gateway resource, but just a very basic, well, uh, load balancer service that is um, ac uh, accessible from the outside. Curl 
uh, port 9080 in this case, config example, resources, just what we had before, and then I hopefully can access my application as well. And then I can see that this um, actually works in this, uh, works in a very similar way. So I again post something to, uh, for my application, create a new uh, message, and then I see this works in the Kubernetes setting as well. If we have a look at the running um, at the running pods and specifically the logs that we see in our running container, um, then also what we can do is that we um, see well the first lines uh, of a running application server. So that default server has been launched and it actually will tell us which configuration will be processed here. So what we can see that we have, to have this Postgres driver as a default uh, configuration. And also we have, well, these defaults as the server XML um, that we saw before um, from, from this default base image as well. So we see what happens here. And then of course, well, we have our uh, application um, server XML or the, de the default server um, XML if you want. That is part as the well only application that runs in this uh, server instance that has our um, server XML configuration that is part of our project that builds everything together. And this is how we can use um, uh, use and connect to data sources from Open Liberty instances in a best practice fashion with well minimal um, configuration and with minimal moving parts, especially if we use cloud native technology such as Docker containers or Kubernetes clusters. Thanks a lot for watching.